Lord, thirsty, come to the water, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather once again this morning to celebrate this wonderful celebration of the Eucharist, let us prepare ourselves to do so by calling to mind our sins, and once again asking our loving God for His mercy and His forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome mortally the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate, and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again, he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was up to my waist. Once more, he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river, where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river, I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district of, down upon the Araba, and empties into the sea the salt waters which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live. And there shall be abundant fish, for wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the water, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord, the Lord of, of hosts, hosts is with us. 
our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth sh be shaken, and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The, the Lord, Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The, the Lord, Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. A clean heart create for me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool caught in Hebrew Bethsaida with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? So the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat, and walk. They asked him, who is the man who told you, take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. We once again hear in our Gospel today of the healing ministry of Jesus. Jesus comes to Jerusalem, goes to this pool that's called Bethsaida, where a lot of ill people are there, those who are crippled, those who are blind, those who are lame, all those who wish and want to be healed because they have believed that if they go into this pool when it is stirred up, they will be healed of their many infirmities. And there is a man who has been lying there for 38 long years, waiting, hoping for that day when he might be able to go into the water to be healed. Luckily for him, Jesus comes to him today and asks him if he wants to be healed and heals 
command of all his infirmities. The problem is, of course, as Jesus often does, that Jesus heals this man on a Sabbath, which, of course, to the Jewish religious leaders is very much against the rules of their customs. And so, because these religious leaders are so focused not on the spirit of the law, but the letter of the law, they begin to persecute Jesus. They do not see what has truly happened. They do not see the blessing that took place, but instead are so focused only on what they deem to be important that they feel, fail to see the true beauty of the moment that has occurred in front of their eyes. How so for us as well sometimes, we become so caught up in our own rules, in our own laws, in our own wishes and desires, that sometimes we fail to see the presence of Jesus in our own life. Perhaps this moment in our lives, and this moment in our world when we are being asked to distance ourselves, is an opportunity for us to look into the depths of our hearts to see where Jesus is asking us to pick up the mat of our own stubbornness, to pick up the mat of our own pridefulness, and instead to be healed of all of that, to come to our loving God once again. In this wonderful season of Lent, that is what we have been asked to do. To come back to God by leaving back, leaving behind all of our pridefulness, all of our sinfulness. To come back to the God who continues to want to heal us, to affirm us, to lift us up. As we celebrate this wonderful Eucharist today, may we continue to receive that strength that we need to pick up our mat, to walk to our loving God to constantly unite ourselves in relationship with Him. And so trusting in our God who continues to love us, let us pray and let us bring to Him our prayers and petitions this morning. And so we continue to pray for Pope Francis, for Archbishop Gomez, that in these times they may continue to lead us in our faith and our trust in our loving God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who continue to provide health care to those who are sick, our doctors and our nurses who put themselves at risk every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who feel isolated or cut off from their communities, that just as the man who was healed today was able to receive the healing presence of God, may we allow the presence of Jesus to enter into our own lives and lift us up in community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling financially because of the closing of businesses at this time that the Lord may find ways to provide for them in these moments and give them peace and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick, that they may continue to receive the healing touch of our loving God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray especially at this Mass for the intentions of Patty Channer and the repose of the soul of Brock Martin whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died and gone before us, may they receive the peace of the eternal kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-loving God, you have called us to let go of our selfishness, to rise and to return to you. Listen, we pray to the prayers we bring before you as we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, and become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself <laughs> have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator for this our mortal life, and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that, freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Jose, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of the Assumption, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Let it reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me.
us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in times to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.